Coming up on today's Locked On Hawkeyes podcast, Trent Condon, LaShawn Daniels breaking down the game against Michigan and a look forward, Illinois on deck, the Big Ten West. Though it's a mess, it is an opportunity still there for this Hawkeye team. How much improvement do we take away from the game against Michigan offensively? We'll talk about that and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Our Locked On Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back once again to the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. I'm Trent Condon. He's LaShawn Daniels as we talk Hawkeyes with you. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen each and every day, wherever you find podcasts. You can also catch us on the video side of things on YouTube. Just search Locked On Hawkeyes. And while you're there, we'd love it if you hit the subscribe button. Today's episode of the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast is sponsored by Safe, Simply Safe Home Security with Bass. Protect TM technology exclusively from Simply Safe. 24 7 monitoring agents capture evidence to accurately verify a threat for faster police response. There's no place like Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com slash lockdown college to learn more. Well, LaShawn, I was there on Saturday. It was a charged up crowd, it was an environment that was very good. Hawkeye fans tried to get into it once again, but ultimately, well, it was too much Michigan. Let's uh, kick things off, and I'm just going to leave it wide open to you. Takeaways from what you saw as Michigan wins at 27-14. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, for starters, obviously Michigan's fantastic football team. All right, they're the defending Big Ten uh, champs uh, made it to the playoffs last year, and it looks like, again, this year they're going to have another really, really good team. Um, they came into the game. Uh, on Saturday and really kind of dominated on both sides of the ball. Right. Um, I think the most surprising thing to me was how good they were up front. Right. Like uh, on offense, Michigan, they were able to move the line of scrimmage, you know, a few yards deep, every single play, right. Especially in the first half, even, you know, when we did get some stops in the red zone, um, they get field goals, but I mean, they were able to sustain drives from running the ball quite a bit. And um, McCarthy was doing a great job, obviously taking care of the football and um, getting it to his playmakers and making the plays that they needed to make. Um, offens offensively, uh, we did see a little bit of improvement um, in the passing game, which is good, right? We had some explosive plays um, that, you know, they went to Luke Lachey, who had a great day, right? Um, so we're seeing some progress in the passing game, but uh we still got issues um on the offensive line and in the run game as we're going against a you know a better better front front seven so still a bunch of things that have to be worked out but obviously give a bunch of credit to michigan obviously they're a fantastic football team they came in here um they didn't do anything special they played a clean game of football and ultimately you know the talent and the better team just just won yeah, it was just Michigan's better, and that's the yeah. takeaway from this one. They're a better football team in Iowa. The way that they're built, they have to be perfect. You have to be perfect. And in a day where the defense wasn't perfect, well, it showed up there, even with the improvements that you saw offensively. So, LaShawn, I get together with uh, my group. We have our section together in 109 and buddies from college that are all together. And we've sat together for years and years now. I'm going back oh, 25 plus years now since I started going to games. So got this group together. And then we also go down to the, uh, I guess it'd be what, the southeast end zone in the corner there at halftime. There's that little gap there. And my buddies that sit in different places across the stadium, they also come. And we just talk about the first half and kind of recap everything. We had 90 yards of total offense at the half. You know, things are looking better. 90 yards yeah. of offense. We're talking about how much <laughs> better know. things were at that point. <laughs> and, and six of those yards came on that stupid fake kneel down play that they ran at the end of the half, which kind of Bush League for my mind, uh, running that one. It just, yeah. that's where we are with this team. A lot of the yards were put up late in the football game in the fourth quarter. Uh, Michigan was playing a very soft, you know, kind of prevent zone defense. And I, I can see how Spencer looks good in practice because that's probably the kind of defense that he's working against a lot of times. It's just some soft zone and able to get some work in. 
I didn't walk away thinking that this was some great eureka moment, that suddenly uh, Iowa's offense is figured out. It's better. Hey, we're not worse in the country anymore. We're 130th now in the country in total offense, not 131st anymore. Yeah, it's better. But when you're going from the lowest bar possible, it's still not great. This offense still can't win. There's not a game I still see on the schedule. If the Iowa defense struggles a little bit, you think of Illinois and their physical brand of football that they're going to be playing on Saturday night coming up. You look at the other teams that are great in the Big Ten West, but there's still not a game on this schedule that I see still with this offense even improving that they can go out and win it, that this offense can put up 31, 35, 38 points and win the game. We're still not at that point, right? No. Um, no. We're, we're, we're not even – you know, we, we've obviously seen improvement, right? Statistically, right? We've made improvement. But, yeah, I mean, again, right now, offensively, it's not – I know we talk about complimentary football all the time, and uh, Coach Ferentz talks about complimentary football all the time. And it's not really complimentary football when, you know, the defense and the special teams are dragging the offense every single week, right? Because um, that's not complimentary, right? Um, the offense – is going to have to provide something, right? Because the defense can't be perfect every single week, right? Like it's like it's just not not going to happen, especially as we go against some really good teams, right? We got a this is a tough, really, really, really tough stretch we got right here, Michigan, right? Then we got Illinois this week, and then you know in a few weeks you got Ohio State, right? That's not not an easy stretch, right? And the defense isn't going to be perfect, right? Um, mm -hmm. every every series, right? So the offense is going to have to give us more right and i know we talked about this right before we came on here but like because the offense as a whole is not an efficient unit the margin for error is so small right so whenever we miss you know i just think of the one in the first half right where spencer missed the tight end right over the middle right yeah, the like scene, we yeah. don't yeah we don't convert we don't hit that play right like because our offense isn't great right like those opportunities only pop up every you know, maybe once a game, twice a game, yeah. right? And when we don't hit those, right, we end up being in a situation where I think we ended up punting on that drive, right? So we don't get any points, right? And then they go down and, you know, they get points, right? So because that margin of error is so small and because our offense is very inefficient, it puts so much stress on the defense and special teams that's like, if we don't make a play, if we don't get like a big interception or if we don't block a punt or we don't do, you know, anything right like we're not going to score enough points to win right and right now it's not very very complimentary uh football from the Iowa football team and it's been been based on the offense right it's not just it's not just Spencer um it's not just the offensive line it's not just the receivers right or the running game right it's everyone as a whole and right now it's just not not a very cohesive unit you know I I go back and I think of First of all, you know, the the evolution that we've seen from Kirk and the changes that he has evolved and changed and adapted. And he has at a certain level during the 24 years, obviously, as a head coach, you have to. I mean, there's no way you can survive without an evolution of things. But as you get older, I think it goes for all of us. You get a little more stuck in your ways, a little more headstrong and maybe unwilling to adapt and change. You go back to you know, early in your career and the evolution that we saw. And after that disappointing four and eight year, there were changes and there was a little more aggressive attitude and the ability to go for it more on fourth down, those kind of things. They were small. They were little things that happen. But I don't know if Kirk is willing to do that anymore. And that's the concerning part about this. I love Kirk Ferentz as a person. I, I love him as a football coach and what he's meant to this program. And I love being 42 years old, and I've only seen two football coaches in my life at the University of Iowa. That, that is a badge of honor. Yeah, is it mediocrity at times? Sure. But there's also the other part. There aren't those big lulls. There aren't those big step backs. You know, you are going to be a consistent weather, winner in what he is going to build. College football over the last two, three years has changed more, though, than has changed certainly in my lifetime and maybe you know, dating back 100 years. I mean, that's how far we have changed with the NIL era and the transfer portal and everything else and as things continue to change. And that's off the football field. And then on the football field, how it's changed. And we've talked about this a lot. Obviously, you as a former Hawkeye running back about the zone blocking scheme and how different the rules have changed over these five years. And you can't do the same kind of things that you did in the past. You know this program, you know that Kirk has evolved with it. 
are we at a point though that he is willing to change what they do offensively that he can look at it if this season ends say they miss a bowl game say they go five and seven this year and they they don't get bowl eligible something that is always a, a big calling card and Kirk talks about this a lot do you think that he is going to take a realistic view of the offense and say what we're doing just doesn't work in college football today he's changed in the past is he willing to do it with the offense yeah that's a great question um and Frankly, I mean, honestly, I don't know, right? I, I don't know. I know, I obviously know that Coach Ferentz is a very, very prideful guy, right? Yeah. Like, he loves things um, his way. I mean, especially, I mean, anyone would, right? Like, if I was, you know, running a program, right, for over 20 years, right, and we've been doing things a certain way for so long and I've had a lot of success doing it that way, like, I wouldn't feel like I would be in the same boat, boat like, like, it can be hard, like, it would be hard to change, right? But all that said, with how fast just the college landscape has changed, you know, in general, like really over these past few years, right? Like, I mean, you think of towards the end of, you know, the 20, 2000, the 2010s, right? When the spread offenses started taking taking over college football, right? And now um, fast forward 10 years now, and now, you know, you got transfer portals um, taking off, you got NIL and all this stuff, like you just mentioned, right? Like college football is changing rapidly right so looking at that and looking at the way the offense has been trending over the past several years right i know coach Ferentz, he's not going to want to end he's not going to want to end you know with bad taste in his mouth right especially um all the work he's done over his career here at iowa right when he eventually does decide to you know retire and and, and call it right like he's not going to want to end it on a bad taste in his mouth right i mean just just from knowing him right like that's not that's that's not going to be in him in, in him right so he will have to honestly look at everything as a whole like okay what we're doing obviously isn't working right so we're going to have to make some changes and they probably won't be drastic changes right it won't be anything um crazy right we're not going to go air raid right like that's, yeah. that's just that's just not going to happen <laughs> right it's not happening um but right like it could be obviously more willing right to possibly right get getting rid of some of his kind of offensive philosophy right and kind of let in you know uh, whoever the oc is whether it's it is brian which you know it's obviously most likely probably will not right or whoever ends up being that's in here right kind of letting them do their thing and really trying to move iowa really within in the year of 2023 right when we get to that point because mm -hmm. this is like right now well what, what we're putting on on the field right now offensively it just it just hasn't been good the past few years everyone knows that everyone sees it they see the coaches aren't blind like they know it as well right um but obviously like that's talk that that they keep within the building within themselves right they're never gonna you know outright and, and come out and, and say like yeah like or just god awful everywhere right, right. like they're just, they're just not going to do that right but i could see them you know looking and making some changes because right i mean everyone everywhere is doing it right it just seems like mm -hmm. i was the one place that is and i mean even in the nfl right like teams are spreading it out more right they're not going the traditional um you know run the ball 40 times a game right right, right? like it's just it's just not not football in, the, in these days right so yep. we're gonna have to make some changes um to help move this offense forward because Right now, I feel like with the defense that, defenses that we've had, you know, really over the past several years and special teams that we've always had, like I feel like those groups are really being being held back by, by the offense. Well, I said my piece on the first podcast of the week about the officiating. It was a storyline. We'll get LaShawn's perspective on that when we come back. It's LaShawn Daniels, Trent Condon here with you. This is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. The numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe Home Security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. I know because I use Simply Safe in my own home. They protect you with cutting edge technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. Here's why I love it. My house, well, live right up the street from the cop shop. That's great that are just a phone call away, very safe neighborhood. But once there was somebody on my deck in the back, they were looking at my grill, taking a peek there. Right away, monitor went off, and right away, lights came on, and they sprinted away. Now, I never caught the crook, but 
it's good to have that Simply Safe security and have them with you with that 24 7 monitoring with professional monitoring. Simply Safe agents call you the moment a threat is detached and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home or can't be reached. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at safelysafe.com. Simplysafe.com locked on college. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and you'll get the first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to more to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, LaShawn, let's uh, talk about something that dominated Twitter. Uh, people complaining the Boo Birds were out. It wasn't just for the quarterback or the offensive coordinator. It was for the officials. I would got a bad whistle. It's going to happen. And I've said my piece on this. I want to get it from you as a player, as a player that's played at a high level, playing in the Big Ten and being in the NFL. You know there's going to be days that you get a bad whistle. Your takeaway from Saturday, certainly frustration, but as a player, how you work through moments like that when you feel like maybe you're not getting a fair shake? Yeah. Um, I just need to lead it off. It's very, very frustrating, right? If you're not, when you're not getting the call that you feel like should go your way, right? Or, you know, you see a call that gets made or you see a call that gets missed, right? Like it can be, it can be very, very frustrating, you know, as a player, right? Because it's like, you know, I'm going against, I'm going against this other team, this good football team, and I'm going against the refs as well, right? It can feel like that at times. But all of that said, right, like we've been taught like forever, right, that um, whether it's, you know, from high school all the way up to the professional level, right, like don't let the game get to the point where the refs uh, can decide it, right? And realistically, the game was never at that point on Saturday. Um, so, you know, really as a player, right, like, I wouldn't have thought too much of it, uh, especially like with some of those like aggressive penalties that, that I kind of recall on, on our offensive alignment, right? Both on the clipping penalty and uh, the necessary roughness one, right? Like those are aggressive penalties uh, that, you know, just end up being bad discretion at, from the refs, right? But like, I'm not going to stop being aggressive and playing that way just because, you know, it was a discretionary call that that the refs decided to make on, you know, obviously something that we all, everyone probably agrees with that they weren't, they weren't penalties, right? So, you know, it is what it is. You know, you're not going to get, you know, the right whistle every single time, right? That's just, that's just football, right? Like we don't have the robotic refs and all this stuff, right? And we can't subject every single um, penalty to uh, a review, right? Games would be five hours long. So all that said, you know, as a player that, you know, refs, they're, they're part of the game. It is what it is. Um, but obviously, like, I'm not going to change up a bunch of my play just because of how the refs decide to call a game, right? Because I can't, right? Like, I can't be thinking about, you know, exactly what the ref is going to be calling every single time I step out there, right, when I'm already going against um, good football players on the other side. So that's kind of my piece on it. I never really factor in the refs right no ref it's very very rare that a ref referee or a call is going to outright decide a football game mm -hmm. right and um it wasn't that way on saturday no i i go back and this is before your time at 2005 i had a long winning streak at kinnick i think it was 22 games something like that it was the first ever blackout game against michigan i got a bad whistle that day and i was spitting mad about that but it's just the mentality, and it doesn't matter what level of sport. I, I dealt with it playing crappy high school basketball up in North Iowa, you know, baseball and, and stuff. It, you, you deal with these kind of things, and it's going to happen from time to time. But it's just, at this point, I just look at it as such a loser mentality. I said yesterday on the podcast, Spencer Lee, he said excuses are for wusses. And, and the excuses that are out there, I just, I don't like the mentality. There's going to be times that that's going to happen. You have to play through it. And as you said, LaShawn, at the top, you know, Iowa has to be just so damn perfect offensively because of the struggles that they have. Yeah, they can't overcome that. Goes back to the complimentary football, right? Well, because your offense stinks so much, you can't overcome something like that. You can't overcome when you get a bad whistle because you're so bad offensively. And that just kind of goes in lockstep with, with what we've seen. I do want to get one uh, perspective from you. And this is something Kirk has done since the beginning, since 1999 is he'll use timeouts to dress down officials. If something isn't going well, he will do that. What's it like on the sideline when Kirk's going nuts there? And we'll, we could read lips. 
We know there's some choice language. You know, we get a lot of people have this stoic image of of Kirk Ferentz, the elder statesman in college football, nice guy, a professional, but he'll spit some nails out there on the sideline. So take us to the sideline a little bit of what it's like. And you guys ever get a little chuckle? You get a little laugh <laughs> when, you, when you hear Kirk and, and some of the things he's got to say to the, the crew? Uh. Like usually, like at the time, like you're not like chuckling about uh-huh. it. You're just like like something you're afterwards like, that you guys are talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like afterwards, like after the game, you'd be like, "Hey, remember when uh, coach was just going off on the ref, uh, you know, for s- whatever situation it was, right?" So, um, and that's really how it should be taken care of, right? Like, obviously, as players, we can't worry about the referees, right? There's a right. reason why um you know they most of the time they tell us hey don't even don't even like bother speaking to them like coach for so it's like i'll handle it i'll take care of it all this stuff right so it is one thing like a good thing it's like hey like obviously he's always got our back right he's always gonna be fighting for us against like towards the rest right so like we it's not something that we actually have to worry about mm-hmm. but yeah it is definitely like some of the things sometimes uh uh are, are pretty funny i mean i think you could even like hear it sometimes like uh you know like if you're watching it on tv like sometimes like when he's going off right like sometimes you can even catch a glimpse of it yeah. uh on the tv listen so uh yeah it, it it's definitely very interesting um when it happens um and you're on the sideline and you're like right next to him you're just kind of like you're just like right there and you're just kind of just like looking like awkwardly like just <laughs> trying to uh not be involved right because obviously you don't want that energy end up being directed at you which it wouldn't it, it wouldn't be but uh yeah that, that's just that's kind of how it is but i do enjoy i do like it though um that obviously coach Ferentz, he's always going to fight fight for us right and mm-hmm. um make sure that that if the ref does make a questionable call that right like he's going to let him hear it without obviously you know giving her the team and getting us a penalty well I, a good perspective there certainly and yeah I, I would love to be on the sidelines just for that uh one of my best friends he was the red hat on the sideline the guy that brings it back from tv commercials and so he got to be right there next to you guys for a number of years and yeah had some uh, definitely some good stories and some one-liners also some zingers from kirk uh, it's not just dressing down the officials and and a couple of profanities he, he had some things to say that uh always uh, would get a chuckle i think uh for my buddy on the sidelines there well, we're going to take a quick time out well, we're going to continue we're going to look forward that progression some of the positives what that means going forward the big 10 west still is there for a taking after minnesota falls this weekend everybody now has a loss in the big 10 west this thing can be saved it can also go the other direction we'll do that as we continue this is the locked on hawkeyes podcast well if you haven't tried built bars puffs yet what are you depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys guess what there's a new flavor ready delicious indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate that's right built has done it again your new favorite cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture real cookie dough chunks and of course they're covered in 100 real chocolate all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it plus it's healthy for you only 160 calories and 15 grams of protein in them go to built.com snag a box for you and the family they'll be a perfect treat or you can find a really good hiding spot and hoard them for yourself. The kids at my house, my wife, yeah, they like to get into it. And maybe that last package that came my way, uh, maybe we found a different spot for that one. Like all Built Bars, new cookie dough chunk puff is covered in 100% real chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty chocolate covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy texture. You're going to love it. Whether you need a snack for a workout, late night treat, or just a quick bite to eat. Built is the perfect protein bar, and they taste better than a candy bar. Ditch the calories, fat, and sugar. Grab yourself a Bit Bar, and we got this for you. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKEDON15. It'll get you 15% off your order. Use promo LOCKEDON15. Trent Condon, LaShawn Daniels wrapping up with the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. LaShawn, as we finish things here today, I'll look forward. Now, one more game this week with Illinois. It's a road trip. It's a game where Iowa has dominated this series, certainly as of late. But Illinois is playing big boy football. Brett Bielema has gone there and built the program in his image. He is a big, fat man, and he is out there with a bunch of big, fat men up front. Leading rusher in the country in Brown. They can run the football. Tommy DeVito, the transfer from Syracuse, he has been very efficient this year. This is what we saw at Wisconsin, and now we are seeing it at Illinois. Iowa is an underdog here, a three-and-a-half-point dog as we talk uh, here today. So 
a look at the matchup and the physicality you know, coming off the Michigan game. Is is this a good opponent? Is, is this a good one to try to right the ship, trying to find it? And a little bit maybe of a letdown after what Illinois did this week. I, I think Iowa does find Illinois, at least myself, at a good time. What do you think? Yeah, um, it is definitely a good opportunity, right? For It's really a good opportunity for both both programs, right? Like um, Illinois, obviously, they're, they're playing well to start the year. Um, and obviously, they're trying to continue, you know, being on the role that they're on, like showing that, like, yeah, like, we're for real, right? Like, because Illinois, I mean, they've had Wisconsin's number a few times, like, over the past few years, right? But, like, they obviously, they've struggled against Iowa over the past uh, several years as well. So it's like, okay, um, how can we prove to, obviously, not only the country, right, but also to ourselves that we're, like, actually for real now. Like, we can actually go ahead and we can, you know, match this performance that, that we put on on the field against Wisconsin, you know, last week, like, can we duplicate it against, against the Hawkeyes uh, this week, right? And on the flip side now, now you're looking at Iowa, and it's like, okay, we saw some progression made, right, offensively, right? Um, they have another opportunity against another good program, right? This is another good good football team they're going to be going against, right? I mean, we, we've seen them, Illinois offense, right? I think they're averaging almost 30 points a game. Um, and then defensively, I think they hold teams on average things like 230 yards, something around there, right? So, again, they're, they're good on both sides of the football, right? So now Iowa, it's like, okay, we dropped the game against Michigan, but it is what it is, right? That's in the past. We get another great opportunity, not only against um, a good football team, but a good football team in the Big Ten West, right? And um, right now, as you said, right, Iowa's goals in attaining, reaching to the Big Ten title game, right, they're still all there, right? Mm -hmm. And it starts with, obviously, getting back um, this week and beating um, a divisional opponent. Right. And as well as a good football team, because right again, you come out of this game um, and you play strong on all three phases, you know, defensively, obviously, special teams. And then we obviously show some some good growth offensively. Right. It really gives Iowa. Right. Like, OK, like we're not as rough as we may be. Right. And then you also you get that that victory right before the bye week because it's going to sting quite a bunch, right? If you we lose on Saturday, then you got the bye week, and then now you got to travel to Ohio State in a few weeks, right? That's not going to be ideal, right? So coming here strong, um, going on the road against a good opponent, right? It's a very, very big big and good opportunity for, for the Hawks. Opportunity is there. The West is there for the taking. Minnesota looked completely different without Mo Ibrahim out there as he was banged up, had an ankle injury. He wasn't able to go. Purdue goes in there. We know Purdue is going to be a difficult matchup for Iowa uh, at that point. Certainly O'Connell will probably be back healthy and he'll be slinging around to Chuck Jones and we'll see him out there making plays against his former team. Wisconsin is a mess. How about Paul Chris getting fired too? I mean, I knew they were struggling. They have 15 and 10 their last 25 games. That's bad for their standards, but this is a Madison guy. His dad was a coach in Wisconsin. And, and to see that happen, it's just completely different. It, you see Nebraska. Well, of course, they're going to fire Scott Frost. That makes sense. But to see Paul Chris go, and then we look around here, and maybe this is a frustrating aspect for some players, some fans, excuse me, out there, is – it feels at this point, no matter how bad it goes, it's just going to be more of the same. You like to have hope as a fan, right? I'm a Bears fan. I have no hope. I'm a Hawkeye fan. I have no hope. I'm a Twins fan. I have no hope. Hope is gone, Lashana. It's it's a rough existence over here. I'm struggling. <laughs> no, I hear you. I hear you. I mean, it's, it's got to be rough to watch the Iowa offense on Saturday and, and then watch the Bears Ooh. offense on Sundays, right? I, that, that can't be a fun, fun time at all, right? And um. That is, but that is interesting though. Like, obviously, I was shocked, right, to see he was kind of like I didn't even know he was on the hot seat, right? I didn't even know like that was something that was like even up, right? But obviously, I feel like they part of the reason I feel like that came is because obviously they 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 haven't played good against any of the Power Five teams they've played this year, right? Like, I think they are on three this year against all five Power Five teams, but they got um what well, probably in their mind like a uh, head coach of the future and uh jim leonard right yep. over there right who could end up being right a really really good coach for them who could end up being a guy right and i think he's gonna be that their interim coach and you know it could be an opportunity where like hey we probably want to try to jump on him while we have the opportunity before he goes to 
you know, Nebraska, right? And you got to play them, um, you know, every single year, right? So that is something that come out of it, but it's like they were they weren't even like crazy mediocre, right? Like like they've been, I think they're like sixty. Chris was like 69 and like 20 something right over the past since he's been there. Right. So it's not like they were bad. Right. So it's very interesting. Then you compare that to Iowa where again, we're, I think we're very similar record over the past several years, but it's like, you know, obviously like with Iowa, you kind of know what you're going to get and Wisconsin. They're like, we know what we were going to get. And then, you know, we were like obviously sick of it. So they're looking for something else. So it's very, very interesting. Uh, Thing that happened with that coaching change and we'll see if it ends up um you know paying off for us well got some interesting numbers coming up this week uh, a look at the iowa offense and yes it has regressed just how much it's regressed under the brian ference regime got some numbers that i'll be throwing your guys' way Lashawn, he's going to be back with us later in the week we had a week off as i was uh, at a work trip so i was outside of the area last uh, friday we'll be back on friday though more with LaShawn and break things down, get ready for the Illinois game and a whole lot more. And of course, you can talk about the whole Big Ten with Locked On Big Ten. Nate Dickinson takes around the Big Ten in 30 minutes each and every day. Just search Locked On Big Ten and you'll find that. I pop on, LaShawn, I think, has popped on in the past and you can hear everything going on across the Big Ten landscape. That's Locked On Big Ten. LaShawn will do it again on Friday. Maybe bring some positivity. I still got a more, a couple more negative podcasts before we get to that point. We'll do that. We'll make some picks on Friday. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good. All right. We'll talk to you then. This has been the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast.